Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps project and in today's video we are going to talk about the tech stack and the architecture used in this project. Now before moving forward, if you are new over here and have not subscribed my channel yet, kindly do so. So without further ado, let us understand what is the tech stack that we are going to use in this project. So the first one would be a browser. This could be any browser. You can use a Brave browser, you can use a Firefox, Tom, and you can use Google Chrome or the Edge browser, anything would suffice. After that, we are going to talk about what is Nginx and what is the function that it's using in this project. And then we'll talk about the Apache Tomcat, RabbitMQ, and then Memcache. So after that, we're going to talk about MySQL. You can install anything after 5.6 or later that anything would do. So these are the six things that you need to know about in this project. And if these, are, these things like Nginx or Memcache is kind of a jargon for you and you have not heard about it, do not worry about it. We are going to talk about each one of them separately so that you can have a basic idea of what, what do we what do we need these for or why do we need this. So you can have an idea about this and then it would be easier for you to understand in the project wherever we are going to install them and use them. Okay, so let's understand the architecture what is going to happen in this project. So the first one would be a user. As you can see on my screen on the left, there could be a one user, single user, there could be multiple users, there could be a browser. So this is something a user could stand for. After that, these users are going to make a call to Nginx, and this would be your this would be a second call. And after that, the control goes to the Tomcat, which is your server. After that, it's going to talk to the RabbitMQ, and then this will happen in, in, in kind of a queue thing. We'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about the memcache, and then it is going to talk to the MySQL, which is going to be the database database for this application. So this is a very simple architecture. I can I couldn't have explained it more simpler in, in this project. So these things that we're going to use in this project, and then later once we are done with it, we are going to deploy everything uh, through through we'll take some kind of CI tool. Could be it could be a team city, it could be Jenkins, anything. So do not get confused about anything. We are going to discuss about every single product in this project. So let's get started on that. So let us understand what is an Apache Tomcat. Before starting this, I want you to be very sure that do not get confused between Apache HTTP server or Apache Tomcat because both of them are managed by Apache Software Foundation. So do not get confused. We will be talking about Apache Tomcat. Okay. So when we talk about this, what exactly is Apache Tomcat? Tomcat is a servlet engine that implements the servlet and JSP specification. What is a servlet? What is JSP? JSP stands for Java Server Pages and servlet is a Again, another term for it, not, not another term for JSP, it's, it's, it's a separate term. Okay, so these are the Java related technologies. When you say advanced Java, these are related to that. If you have an idea about that, great. Otherwise, you need to have a, you need to do a little bit of Google about that and what ex understand what exactly is a servlet in JSP specification. It can implement Java based logic. So as I already told you that uh, there is a Java based logic which is written in servlet and JSP. It can implement that through a, a kind of an application. Tomcat can interact with any backend resources like DB or the messaging queue. So we are, we'd be using MySQL server in this and then we'll be using a message broker as well. So this Tomcat will help us to communicate between both of them. All right. So this is how an Apache Tomcat logo looks like. So I hope these things are clear to you. Let's move to MySQL server. So this is a database management system. What is the database management system? Something that maintains your data as simple as that. It has querying and connecting capabilities. So you can query your database. You can write your own tables and you can put your data over there and you can query them and connect it with a lot of other applications. It can integrate excellent data structure with many different platforms. So you can have different platforms and it can integrate with that. It can handle large databases reliably and quickly to get your database and you can use that in a high demanding production databases as well. Let's talk about RabbitMQ now. So a message broker, basically it's a message broker and intermediary for messaging. So if there are messages that needs to be exchanged, you can use RabbitMQ as a tech for that. It's an open source, so free of cost, you can download it and use it. It provides a common platform to application for sending and receiving your messages. So if there is an application, it will provide a common platform. You can receive that, you can send that message to any consumer or producer, and it keeps your messages safe unless they are received. So let us understand this through a diagram. 
So if you can see on the left side is a producer and on the rightmost side is a consumer. So between producer and the consumer, the mass message has to be sent and that has been kept by RabbitMQ server. So it will publish it to some exchange and this exchange is bounded by the, by the queue. So this is some kind of queue and then this queue will have your messages and this messages will live there until unless consumed by anything. So until unless they are consumed by anything, they will stay there. So it is consumed by the consumer over it. So that's how a rabbit MQ uh, server works in your application. So we're going to use that. Okay, hey guys, so now we're going to understand what an Nginx server is. So in one word, Nginx server is a free open source high performance HTTP server and a reverse proxy as well as as an IMAP POP3 proxy server as well. But in order to understand this is just a definition in order to understand what it exactly does we are going to talk about the problem it is trying to solve over here okay so as you can see on my screen so what i'll do is consider let me just select a brush over here so consider there is an application okay so you have written some application and you are running over it so what generally happens you are running an application and it is uh, you you have a local setup you have a vm in which you have set it up and this is your app running and people are using it so let us understand what is the problem it is trying to resolve let me just get rid of this now what we'll do is there is a user okay now this user is trying or there, there could be a group of users as, as i showed you in the ppt okay so what they are going to do is they are going to access the application and this application is running over somewhere so for example your application is running in a local setup and it is running fine but for once, when you are trying to move over any kind of cloud or any kind of uh, cloud services, you are going to run it on a VM or an instance. So you have spun an instance on AWS, Azure or GCP for, or there, there is a plethora of it, of it. So your application is running on some port. Okay. So let's say this port is 100, for example. People are using this port and your application is running fine. People are enjoying your application. But over a course of six months or seven months, your application became famous. Now there is a lot of load that is happening on this particular server and is not able to handle it. So what is the first thing that you do? You what you will do is you'll spin one more server and you'll give something like 110 to this as a port. Now people can access this application from 100 port and 110 port as well. Both of them, them is running fine. But there is, there is a basic problem to this issue that a user does not know in which server the traffic is more, whether his request would be would get a response or not. So what you do is you just kept kept on uh, like this because there was no much not much load. So people were enjoying your application over the course of one more year, your application grew bigger. And then what you did, you spun a new server, exactly the same thing. And this is now running on 120 port. OK, now people are some of the people are coming over here, some of the people are coming over here, some of the people are coming over here, again giving different port number and your application is accessible. Now you have a doubt like why my application is working because these are three things. This is first server, this is, this is first, this is second and this is third. How come is it working? Because they are talking to the same database. So there would be a database over here. Uh, this can be any database. We'll use MySQL. So let us consider this as MySQL. So this deep, this is going to talk to this one and this is going to talk to this one and all the application is going to talk to this one. So that's why it is able to access our application and nothing is happening over it. Now what happens is uh, over the course of one more month your traffic becomes huge and it's not able to handle. So what you will do you will spin a one more server. So if you spin one more server you're going to keep on doing that. No that's that's not a good solution. So what is the next solution for that? Here, the problem is trying to trying to be solved through a server which is known as Nginx server. So what Nginx servers will do, let me just show it to you. Okay, let me just get rid of this. So now what, what happens is when the traffic increases, you want to start a new instance, right? But not, you cannot do it, you cannot, you cannot do it every time. So what you will do is Nginx will solve this problem. So for example, let me, let me get rid of this. You select this and let me delete this. Okay, now I'll just get rid of it. Perfect. 
Now what we'll do, we'll introduce a new server in the between, which is your Nginx server. Now this Nginx server will run on some port. Let's just consider that port to be 443. Now this will become as a gateway for the requests that are going to come. Now if there is a server 1, server 2 and server 3, so let us name them 1, 2 and 3 and there is an application running over here, application running over here, application running over here. The request that is going to come is going to come to the Nginx server and this Nginx server will take care of every request and it is going to maintain which server has the lowest traffic. For example, it can handle 1000 requests. Okay. Let me change the color. This can take 2000 requests and this can take another 2000 requests. Okay, let us consider this as 2000 as well. Now, this is already taking 2000 requests. This is also full. Now, what Nginx will do as soon as there is a new request, let's, let's say 2000 plus 2000 is equal to 4000. Okay. Now, the new request which is 4001 request which, is come over, which will come over here it will check, okay, this server is full, this server is full. I have to check the lowest traffic, so it will pass this to this application. And this application is running on third server. Now, it, it is not a problem because it is all talking to the same database. So, that's how an Nginx is trying to resolve this problem. Now, uh, the request, the user request will go to Nginx and the Nginx will smartly manage the load. It takes care of the load of all the servers and redirect your request to that server with with low amount of uh, which which whichever has the low amount of load okay now there is one more thing about it uh, nginx sometimes what they do what it does is it maintains a cache it will create a cache for example there is a route which is very very much accessed by a lot of people and there is a lot of request coming on it will maintain a cache over there now what happens is nginx not go will not go every time to this database it will not go what it will do it will keep a few stuff in the cache and whenever there is a request from the user it will go to the cache first and find find it if it finds it it will just return the response to the user and your query will be solved and it is much faster than that because it does not have to go to database every time so this is the function of nginx and that is the problem it is trying to resolve and we will see that in our demo so let's talk about memcache so what exactly is memcache? It's a very fast in-memory cache. It was built by a company called as Jenga. It's basically key value store. So it used to power live journal website. So before this Facebook took over, live journal was a very famous website. People used to have their blogs over there. And then it used to power by this memcache. Now it is very famous and a lot of people use it. Uh, I think Facebook, Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, and all other websites use it it's very important for them plus a lot of people do use it when they create some kind of web applications it's very simple and highly effective memcache so uh, if this is just this is just a overview about it let us understand through a diagram okay so we'll discuss what is memcache over here now let me draw something over here let me select a proper brush over here okay so let us consider a fact that there is a user over here. So now what I'll do, I'll just create a user over here. Okay. So here is a user. What it does it, user will make a call to some kind of application server. So there can be multiple application servers over there. Let me consider four application servers. Okay. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. And for understanding, I can just write its name user and there I can write app servers. Okay. This is how it looks like. This is a very general scenario. Now what happens is these servers might talk to the database. Okay. So all of them can talk to the database. There is no constraint over that. And then this database will respond over here and then this app server will respond and then the user will get the response. Okay. So this is a basic scenario. Now what happens is a lot of times when things has to be fast, we use memcache over here. Okay. So this is your memcache. Okay, now what it does is all of these servers will talk to memcache first. Let me take another color. All of these servers will talk to memcache and then get a response. 
and if they do not find any kind of information in memcache it will go to the database again and then find the information for them this is the authoritative part so it does not matter whether it's find over here or not okay now uh, according to the libraries you can have multiple memcache so if this is memcache one you can have multiple machines for memcache okay so this can increase up to uh, whatever you can have multiple memcache machines so this this is not an issue okay now uh, what happens is uh, these work on a principle of key value store okay so i hope you already know what 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 a key value store is some kind you can understand it something like a giant hash table so it's something like a giant hash table in which we have key and values okay now there is a very common practice so what you can do is you can create let me select another color you can create a bit of little memcache in these servers it's a very common practice these days it is not a compulsion but you can create so this is where you can create a little bit of memcache over here and then your application becomes fast because you can always talk to this part of memcache instead of talking to this so this is one another thing but you can it looks like it becomes a giant ball of connections a lot of connections becomes it but at the end it all works pretty much fine and the connections and the results come over so this is one of the very interesting topics in terms of web application in terms of caching that you need to understand so i hope these things are clear to you and if there is an issue whatever we have talked in today's video i hope these things are clear to you and if there is an issue feel free to comment below and we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one